person there. They're leaving. You blame them? Guys, this is a freaking mess. Rod focuses all of his energies on the music. There's Lonnie. So she gets on stage playing music every night. Lonnie Walker is in debt $515,000. I would not put myself up on that stage if the bar was losing business. You know, like the Wonder Pose? Yep. That's the international Wonder Pose. So when I yell from the stage underground, Wonder Pose, everybody does that. OK. Now we know. This is my showtime walk. Wonder Bar! And I'm here! So good. Do, do, sit in the moon. <laughs> We're gonna start that one again. <laughs> she can't sing. And don't you my full security. The sad thing is, if she didn't move to River North Chicago, mm -hmm. she could own some little bar somewhere, yeah. pay two thousand dollars a month rent, mm -hmm. and she could live her dream playing music and be doing it. But the fact of the matter is, she put herself in a premium space at eighteen thousand dollars a month, and now she's. Customers are walking out. So she's been on stage now for about four minutes, and they're already leaving. I want to thank you all for being here tonight at the Underground Wonder Bar. You guys are awesome. Oh, all right, all right, all right. Why are you here? <laughs> There's another bar downstairs, and then Jordan's gonna do some spoken word. The bartender back here. This is a two-story venue. Rent is about sixty dollars a foot. So based upon the economics of the bar business, she's got to do two million dollars a year out of that bar. Jeez. That's why the downstairs is just as important as the upstairs. Mm -hmm. Let's hope Jordan is better at speaking than his mother is at singing. Indigenous. I said indigenous people of Chicago, there is no need to swallow the pride that has given us the strive to strive down these streets and fleets for so long. Why, oh, too many of the films I used to play in are gone. This is just not another sad Their stage is right above him. So the spoken word is now the screaming word. It sounds like my mom is struck back up up there. <laughs> what the f is this? Lonnie doing her thing with the music was odd. It was odd. It was uncomfortable. <laughs> what she is doing may have worked 20 years ago, but it is not going to work today in River North Chicago. Mm -hmm. Her delusion ends right now. I'm going in, guys. There's Tony. I don't even know how to make a damn drink. <laughs> That's a character. He looks like he should be doing karaoke in a budget hotel somewhere, doesn't he? He certainly has a very specific look. I can only handle one question at a time. Hang on. If he put the time he puts into his hair, into his business, maybe the guy wouldn't be failing. I think you're right. Tony was an entertainer. A year ago, took his life savings, a quarter of a million dollars, and bought this bar. His son, Nick, was running it. Tony and Nick had a fight. He pushed Nick out. He's pushed his wife out of the business. I don't know if we can recoup from it. He's almost pushed his daughter out of the business. I can't do this. And now this family is completely destroyed. I'm going. <laughs> no, I'm serious, babe. That's sad. Yeah. <laughs> so there's our server. That's not even the right ticket, but whatever. Tattoo girl, you put my order through, right? I think she's ignoring me. And what's Tony doing? Oh, look at that. Is he entertaining? 
All right, ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? I may have had just one too many tequilas. And the drinks that I overpoured, I had to drink them. <laughs> Anybody in here Irish? <laughs> uh, oh, daddy boy, the pipes, the pipes are calling. This is his passion. Now, facilitating his own ego was more important to him than taking care of his business. Yeah. I have nachos, wings. Did you see the wings, though? They're Remy. What up? Look at those chicken wings. Is that a freaking pencil holder from elementary school? That's what it looks it like. It's plastic, for sure. But that's not even a food service container, is it? No. No. Thank you. Sure. Okay. Uh, Riley. Gone. What? New one. What's wrong? <gasps> there is a hair in the wing. I want to shoot myself in the face. So there's a silver hair oh, God. on his food. Man. I wonder where that came from. Coming back when summer's in the Here's a guy who likes to drink because he's the life of the party. It pumps his ego. He likes to buy everybody drinks, Mike, because it pumps his ego. Look at how well-dressed he is because it pumps his ego. Look at how he's just focused on being a man on stage because of his ego. ego. I'm not sure. If he's salvageable, why don't you guys go in? And let's see if his ego is more important than his business. OK? All right, All right let's see what happens, guys. Okay. Thank you. I got to end this. I'm going to send my experts in to pull the plug, literally, right now. Oh, when the valley is hushed and white with snow, yes, I'll be here. What happened? Come on down, Tony. Show's over, Tony. Get down here. Yeah. Uh, you're running such a show here that John didn't even want to come in, so he sent us in. Uh-huh. So come on back. I want you to show me your kitchen. Oh. <laughs> we were in the SUV watching this disaster go on. You are the owner of a bistro, and you don't even know where to begin. I don't even know what a bistro is, to tell you the truth. Then why'd you buy one? I don't even know where to begin with you. You are drinking on the job. There was broken glass in that well and you didn't even know about it. Your patrons had to tell you that there was glass broken in it. Your job is to be responsible for all of your guests. And I wouldn't blame any of them for walking out. Do you want to be a singer? Or do you want to be a bar owner? Bar owner. But you are not taking responsibility for anybody in this building. You call this a high-end bistro? I call this a circus. Michael and I are gonna go talk to John. That was bullshit. I don't even know why I listen to them. You don't come in here, rip somebody apart, and then run out the door and just act like, well, we're done. Well, you didn't give me a chance. Where in the hell they go? John! John Taffer! Well, where the hell'd you go? Maybe John thought we were hopeless. Maybe he thought there's no help for us. Maybe they think all I want to be is a karaoke singer. But that's not what it is. We probably blew our <laughs> chance. I have no idea if John's coming tomorrow. I'm going to be here tomorrow. If he wants to be here tomorrow and he wants to help me, I welcome him. But if he doesn't think he can take the time and mold my staff and mold me, in, what do I do? This carpet is disgusting. This bar is a failure from the street. I can only imagine what the inside is like. Look at this guy. What the f is that? What the f is that? Wow. 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 What the hell are we looking at? I feel like f earlier. I still kind of feel weird. There's Rod. He's the owner. He's two hundred and fifty thousand in debt. He doesn't even know how much longer he has. It's crazy. The the money that these guys are getting. That's Tony. Tony's the entertainment manager. So Tony is responsible for the live music program at this bar. Hey, who's the Singer. Okay, you get the mic there. There's Joe. He's our production manager. Joe runs the actual live show. Okay. And you're not busy by it? There's Heather. Heather is the bartender. Okay. Now what? Come join the party. How's it going? How you guys doing? Good. 
Squeeze in, we're all friends. Can you get me some band to open up? Look at that. I know the bass player. I can find him for you. So they're having a business meeting in the middle of the bar when one guy's laying on a couch. Hey guys, how are you? I'm all right. They can't rely just on live music. They gotta have more. Yep. I'm hoping some people will show up. Oh, here comes the band. This is the band that he booked. He's got a horn on his head and his ass is showing in a room that is completely empty. Hi, hello, this is Cat Bless America, and this song is uh, called Under the Black Flag. This is a freaking mess. Rod focuses all of his energies on the music. There's Sal. There he's our owner. Mr. Dimples. What's interesting about Ooh. Sal is he's been doing this about 50 years. Because you've done something for a long time doesn't necessarily make you good at it. Yeah. There's Roberto. Roberto. He's our head cook, Brian. It's a young lad himself. Also not a spring chicken. Mm. Sure. There's Terry, the DJ. I understand he's worked here 12 years. There's Kim. She's our head bartender. She's been there 10 years, guys. And last but not least, there's Elle. And Elle is our cocktail waitress, and she is our junior new employee, two years. jeez. Oh, <laughs> I can't get over the amount of garbage in this place. Look at this <laughs> everywhere. It's like there's 30 years worth of crap. So guys, you know me. I've had this place under surveillance oh, for yeah. three days now. Yeah. You've got to see what the customers are saying about this bar. Sal is one of those, those old guys that are very, very, one way about things. I think we could use maybe a little bit of an update with the sound system. All right, Jason. Yeah, 9911. What? Is this a karaoke bar or a bingo hall? Did you just <laughs> hear that? Here's the epitome of bad karaoke production. This is a nice guy. He came here to spend his money and his voice is oh. terrible. This is where you make the guy sound good. Oh, good, the band's arriving. What? How are you doing tonight? Wow! Oh man. Okay, Jen's covering her head. Punk rock should be loud, but it can't be piercing. So when you're bringing the volume up because the system stinks, it becomes intolerable for you. It creates an unsafe environment for the customers and staff and could lead to irreversible ear damage. I mean it's unprofessional. Right. As a musician, I would not want to play here because the bar is not designed to have live music that is amplified like that. And it just doesn't look like anyone's going to survive this way because in a punk rock world, the scene here is too limited to be successful. Oh, John, hey, he's here. Hey, Gabe, he's here. What do you think, Joe? It's a tough room. And if you get booked in this place once, you will tell your agent next time. John Taffer. David. How's it going? I like to meet some friends of mine. John is the punter for the Seattle Seahawks. David. Hi, I'm Sarah. Sarah Colon is a dear friend of mine. Sarah is a comedian. Hi. Jennifer Allen is local. And uh, Joe Escalante David. is the bassist for the nice Vandals. Oh, really? Wow. Did this bar work for you? It didn't smell great, and the drinks were very strong. Did it work for you? No, it, it, it doesn't work. It needs help. I'm told you're about 160000 in debt. Yeah, this is why we kind of challenged you. We didn't think you were able to meet the challenge of a punk rock scene. Oh, really, Joe, is there any punk bar that can fill up 365 days a year? Not playing punk rock. No, it's just not a business. And I've been in the punk rock business most of my life. You can't flounder in here in a sweater and just say I'm punk rock. It doesn't work like that. David, listen, block. respect somebody who's legendary in the punk rock space who grew up playing in venues like this. You guys flew in on the wrong plane. We don't want you here anyways. This is not an emo bar or a house music bar. If you think you can run a punk bar and make money 350 days a year, I suggest that you don't know punk music at all. Hi, this is John Taffer. Click here to subscribe to Paramount Network on YouTube for more Bar Rescue.